Hey everyone, it's Tyler the Antenna Man. Last week, Lon Simon and I met with the FCC to formally express our opposition to the NAB's proposal to shut down the current TV standard, ATSC 1.0, in favor of the new ATSC 3.0 TV standard. Our opposition stems from broadcasters' use of DRM encryption on ATSC 3.0 broadcast signals, limiting the availability and functionality of consumer devices, which has ultimately slowed down consumer adoption. Our meeting took place on Thursday, August 14th, at the headquarters of the Federal Communications Commission in Washington, D.C. Details of what was discussed in the meeting, along with our presentations, can be found in the ex parte linked in the description. In Lon Simon's portion of the presentation, he shared his experience trying to find a next-gen-enabled TV in local stores. Not a single one was available for sale at Walmart, which is the largest retail seller of TVs in the United States. Lon also showed various devices working just fine with unencrypted ATSC 3.0 channels, including multiple TVs, NVIDIA Shield, an iPhone, iPad, and Xbox, all of which are effectively broken with DRM encryption. My portion of the presentation include examples of devices that were essentially taken away from consumers due to broadcasters' use of DRM encryption, examples of certified devices that have trouble decoding DRM encrypted channels, the broadcasters claim about needing DRM encryption to keep valuable content over the air is contradictory to trends, and that the A3SA lacks transparency and oversight. At the end of our presentation, we requested that the FCC prohibit DRM encryption on public TV broadcasts on the basis of public safety and to speed up consumer adoption of ATSC 3.0. We also requested that the FCC keep the substantially similar rule in place, which requires TV stations to continue broadcasting their channels on the current TV standard. Since we were not allowed to record the meeting, I'm going to show a practice recording of my portion of the presentation to replicate exactly what I presented to the FCC. Lon Seidman will be doing the same, so be sure to follow the link in the description to see his video portion of the presentation. All right, so there are going to be several things that I'm going to talk about in this presentation. If any of you are confused or have any questions at any point, feel free to stop me and I'll answer them. Broadcasters' use of DRM encryption has taken away consumer devices from the market. Some next-gen certified set-top boxes and even standalone TVs have trouble decoding DRM encrypted channels. Broadcasters' claim of needing DRM encryption to keep valuable content over the air is contradictory to trends. And the A3SA lacks transparency and oversight. So DRM taking away devices from the market, one example is the HE Home Run Flex 4K. This is a very popular ATSC 3.0 tuner among my audience and even in general. It's the best selling ATSC 3.0 tuner on Amazon. Very easy to set up. You connect it to your home's modem and then you can access it wirelessly on pretty much any device. You can see all the supported devices on the top. It works on a laptop works on smart TVs, Roku TVs, Fire TVs, and even on a laptop and smartphone. It's a pretty advanced piece of tech, but unfortunately due to DRM encryption, it is not a feasible option because it can't decode DRM encrypted channels, which is what broadcasters want to deploy. Another device that was taken away from the market is the GT Media USB stick. This is actually the lowest priced ATSC 3.0 tuner on the market. But because of DRM encryption, it, again, it's not a feasible option. It works fine with ATSC3 channels that are free and open without encryption. But the encrypted ones, it won't play. Another device that was taken away from the market is, and this is kind of a unique situation, it's the D-Color Ergo set-top box. And this is my personal experience. I attended the National Association of Broadcasters show in 2024. I went up to this booth. This is a picture from the a screenshot of the video I took of that trip. And I talked to a representative there at the booth and I told him, listen, I really appreciate your company's hard work in developing this set-top box. I understand there's a lot that goes involved in the certification process. And, you know, I look forward to more devices coming to the market. And his response was, we don't know if we are going to be able to feasibly launch this product because of how expensive it is to get it DRM certified. And sure enough, it never was released. 
And this is another device that wasn't necessarily taken away, but was um, indefinitely delayed. The ATS, uh, the Tableau ATSC 3.0 over the air DVR, it was originally announced at the beginning of 2022, and then it was delayed. And in, in this article, you can see it says, um, new ATSC 3.0 DRM requirements force Tableau to delay the release of its first ATSC 3.0 over the air DVR. And in fact, within the article, Tableau even admits that because of DRM encryption, the product was delayed and then eventually customers, mon their, their money was refunded. And this was way back in 2022, over three years ago, and it still has not been released. And, and as I said, you can clearly see here from the statement that Tableau says DRM is to blame. DRM has reduced functionality of existing devices on the market. For example, the Zapper box and GT Media set-top boxes require an internet connection to decode DRM encrypted channels. Zenwell's set-top box features offline DRM, but it doesn't work in all markets. The ADTH USB tuner only works on a portion of supported devices, and even some standalone TVs with the next-gen logo certified to decode DRM encrypted channels have issues decoding DRM encrypted channels in certain markets. I'm going to show you guys a few examples, and there's actually about 10 of them, so bear with me and ask any questions if you have any, any questions. So this is uh, from my video review of the GT Media X1 ATSC 3.0 set-top box. When I turned off the Wi-Fi, disconnected the internet basically, I get this message when, I'm try when I try to tune to a DRM encrypted channel. It doesn't load. Same thing happens with Zapperbox. If there's no internet connectivity, if the internet gets lost, or if someone doesn't have internet in the first place, they're not able to access DRM encrypted channels. And then this is a screenshot from AFTV News. It's a review of the ADTH USB tuner. And the guy tested it on over 20 devices, I believe about, actually about 20 devices. And out of the 20 devices, it only worked on two and it, even with those two devices, both had their share of app crashes. So a lot of this stuff just doesn't appear to be stable. This is from Lon Seidman's review of the same tuner, the ADTH USB tuner. It was not able to decode the DRM encrypted channels in his area, even with an internet connection. And then this is the same thing. The Zinwell set-top box, which is certified to decode DRM encrypted channels even without an internet connection. This is from Lon Seidman's video as well. Uh, this is the message that's displayed on the screen when there is no internet connection. It, it clearly says unable to decrypt, no internet connection. An internet connection is required to view this encrypted channel. This is a serious problem. And then you can see there's another example of the ADTH set-top box. This one's a little different. It's a different box. It's made by the same company. Um, the YouTube channel WNY over the air, uh, he, he had it for a while. He noticed one day it was working fine with DRM encrypted channels for a while. But one day in February, it just would not decode them. Here are a few examples of standalone next-gen able TVs having issues with DRM encrypted channels. This was sent to me by a viewer in the DC area here. When they tried to tune to WRC, which has DRM, encrypted, DRM encryption on it, their TV, which is an LG TV, just shows a scrambled message. Same happens on this Hisense TV, which was in the Baltimore market. When they tuned to WBAL, it displayed this mode not supported or just says not supported on the screen. And then here's an example on a Sony TV, which is a little bit of a different message. It says cannot view channel because the TV's license is being updated or another problem has occurred. This poses a serious danger to public safety in severe weather. Should someone lose internet or their set-top box has a DRM glitch and they see this instead of important, sometimes life-saving information from their local TV station. Another subject I'm gonna shift into is a broadcaster's claim about needing DRM encryption to keep valuable content over the air is contradictory to market trends. Sports content is increasingly shifting to over-the-air channels. Leagues have partnered with broadcast companies including Scripps, Tegna, Gray, Weigel, and even some O&O stations. ESPN extended the Monday Night Football simulcast on ABC due to high ratings. 
And as of a few days ago, Paramount struck a seven-year deal to broadcast UFC, which is an incredibly popular sporting event, with some of the matches to air on CBS. So the broadcasters claim about needing Durham Encryption to keep valuable content over the air was true. You wouldn't really see all these deals taking place. A few facts about the A3SA, they are gatekeeping devices that should be on the market for consumers. I provided three if not four examples of that, the HD Home Run, the GT Media USB tuner, that tuner that I saw on display at NAB, and the Tableau over the air DVR. The company literally stated DRM as the reason for the eternal delay. Within the A3SA, there is no transparency and it bypasses any FCC oversight. Everything is done behind closed doors and very few people know what's going on. The NDAs the manufacturers sign prohibit them from speaking out or saying anything that's going on. I'm very lucky that I had a few manufacturers give me a few details. Uh, obviously, the end with the NDA, there's probably a lot more that would have been shared, but because of it, it's not going to be shared with me. And the A3SA puts future functionality of all TVs and set-top boxes in the hands of one single organization, which I think is a very bad idea. The FCC is the organization that should be regulating and overseeing the functionality of TVs and set-top boxes, not an organization that's mainly made up of broadcasters. So I'm aware that a lot of meetings are taking place with discussions on this proposal, but rarely do we really see the faces of those who will be impacted by the proposal. So I decided to get a few pictures of some of my viewers with their antennas to show who is going to be impacted by the NAB's proposal. We need to keep in mind that these people need to come first. They are the ones who will be most impacted and they enjoy watching free over the air TV on all their devices now. Please don't add an unnecessary burden or put them in danger with the use of DRM encryption on public TV broadcasts. So at this point in the presentation, I hand out large prints of this photo collage to everyone in the meeting as a reminder of who matters most in the FCC's decision on the NAB proposal. A few final thoughts. Broadcasters' use of DRM encryption has taken away and limited functionality of devices for consumers. DRM encryption should be prohibited on local TV broadcasts for public safety and to speed up consumer adoption. The market for ATSC 3.0 devices should be open and not regulated by the A3SA. And the FCC should keep the substantially similar rule requiring ATSC 3.0 content to be simulcast on ATSC 1.0. Our meeting with the FCC went really well. Members of the Media Bureau seemed genuinely interested in the presentation and asked several questions along the way. Once again, to clarify, the NAB's proposal to transition to ATSC 3.0 is just a proposal, not a mandate. Beyond our meeting, it's received additional pushback from several companies and organizations. I'm confident the FCC will make the right decision to protect consumers against the inconvenience, expense, and even danger of DRM encryption on public TV broadcasts. I want to thank the FCC's Media Bureau for taking the time to meet with Lon Seidman and myself. It's not often that those outside of the industry obtain a meeting with the FCC, but with Lon and I covering this DRM issue for nearly two and a half years, plus my position consulting with tens of thousands of antenna viewers who will be directly impacted by the proposal, I'm glad that a meeting was set up. Our concerns about DRM encryption, which have mostly been dismissed and ignored by the industry, are now on record with the FCC and may be referenced in the decision on the NAB proposal. The broadcast industry will likely file a formal response to our meeting with the FCC in the next few days. What all do you think they're going to say? Probably call us hostile vloggers with misleading information and once again blame everyone else for this botched rollout instead of taking responsibility. I'll be sure to share any upcoming responses from the industry in a YouTube post, so be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to receive a notification. I'm hoping to make a video on all the responses that come in, but the best way to stay in the loop is with my posts through notifications on YouTube, my Facebook page, and email list, both of which are linked in the description.
I also want to take the time to thank Lon Seidman for spreading awareness of the DRM issue on his YouTube channel over the past two years, along with presenting to the FCC with me. As many of you can imagine, meeting with the FCC was a huge deal that required a lot of preparation. And having Lon beside me made everything easier from forming the presentation to the actual meeting itself. Be sure to follow the link in the description to watch his portion of the presentation and thank him for his efforts continuously advocating for antenna viewers as I do. This was a group effort, and without Lon's help, I'm not sure we would have gotten to this point. Let's wait and see how the industry is going to respond to this. Fake news, hostile vloggers, misinformation. This guy's a loser. <laughs> Just do the right thing. Just do the right thing. All you have to do is do the right thing. You guys are not doing the right thing. Bad things happen when you don't do the right thing. 